The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me. I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when this fellow servants, now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have, have had pity on your fellow servants as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we were praying this morning, Father Mo pointed out to me in both readings they cross the Jordan. And in the Gospel, when Jesus goes beyond the Jordan, as he crosses the Jordan, he's heading to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is the land of peace. Shalom. Peace. The land of peace. And yet, there is no peace there. There's no peace. They have been fighting for thousands of years. And what's interesting is that you would think that they're fighting about the land. But they're not really fighting about the land. I was listening to a podcast recently where this historian said, it's really not the land they're fighting about, it's the story behind the land. The story behind the land. So if you read the Bible, the Old Testament tells you the story of the Jewish people as they traveled out of slavery into freedom. And they're fighting for that land which God gave them. And yet, where the Temple Mount used to be, where the temple was, there is a mosque there now. And the Muslims are fighting for that. And the Christians are there, and there's no peace. 
there's no peace. Because each group is fighting for the story behind the land. What's interesting about the first reading is that Joshua tells the people, sanctify yourselves because God is going to be doing some great things in your midst. In other words, get yourselves cleaned up. Get yourselves cleaned up. And this is how you're going to know, Joshua says, that God is in your midst when he dispossesses you from all of those people who are preventing you from entering into the land. There are seven groups of people. Ah, seven. The number of completeness. And God is going to remove, he's going to set you free from all of those people who are going to prevent you from entering into the promised land, into the land of peace that I'm giving you. And so Peter says, well, you know, I got some issues with some of my people. And how many times do I have to forgive them? Seven times? Oh, no. Seventy times seven times. Oh, there's that number again. And so Jesus begins to tell a story. There's always a story with Jesus. It's always about the story, you know. We all have one. And so in the story, Jesus talks about being willing to dispossess, to set free. And he talks about somebody who doesn't, is not able to repay this debt because it's too much. It's too much. And he's set free from the debt. And then there's somebody else who owes a much smaller amount, and he's set free as well. But he finds somebody that owes him some money, and he's unwilling to dispossess, to set free. And what's interesting is that Jesus calls this person who is unwilling to set somebody else free a wicked servant. Interesting that it's not the person who sins who's a wicked servant, it's the person who refuses to allow somebody else to be set free as a wicked servant. I had to step back from that and think to myself, well, every time I refuse to forgive somebody, I refuse to dispossess them. I refuse to uh, permit them to enter into the land of peace. I hold them hostage. Have you ever held anybody hostage in your life? Raise your hand if you have. Come on, be honest, we all have. We all have. Shalom, the Jewish people say. Peace. Yerusalem, the land of peace. And there is no peace. There could be, if we would all recognize and see that we're all created in his image, if we would be willing to dispossess each other, then we would have the likeness of God. Shalom. Peace be with you. 
Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, qui adue menum isti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit sicut dixit, Alleluia, Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.